What is it you do? It seems like everyone's favourite question to ask, but none of our questions to answer. Anthony Samroff from BeYourselfAndLoveIt.com and here's a helpful video to help you prepare to talk about what you do. And it's a really interesting thing because we all know that everywhere we go, whenever we go to any event anywhere, at least one person, maybe more than one person, is going to ask us what we do. And it's amazing how many of us still squirm when we're asked this question. Well, there's an old saying that goes, if you fail to prepare, you prepare to fail. So this is gonna help you prepare not to fail when you're asked what you do. Because to be honest, you really have no excuse to still find this a difficult topic to talk about because you know that it's gonna come up. So I guess what I'd like you to do, I, you might need to wa watch this again afterwards, but the idea will be to grab a pen and paper and write down a description of your job. And I've got a very special opportunity for you at the end of this video um, to get some free coaching from me that will help everyone else as well. So it's gonna be an exciting one. This is the first time I've offered to do this. So the first thing you're gonna do is just write down the description of your job. Now I'm gonna go through a bunch of questions to inspire you, and you're gonna pick two of these questions that you think, oh, I'd like to answer those two. Technically, you could ask, you could answer more than two, but at least for the purposes of this exercise, get ready to get in the mindset of listening to these questions and thinking which one of them sounds like something you'd have something to say about. What is one thing that you like about your job or, you know, if you're a student, your course of study, or if you're a housewife, your housewifing, whatever it is. What's the one thing, second question, what's one thing that you don't like about it? A bit more out there. Is there anything about your character that's perfectly suited to the job? Is there something that you think that's ironic about someone like you doing your job? For example, an accountant who's a stand-up comic, no offense to accountants, a socialist working in the bank, a vegetarian working in uh, McDonald's, something like that, where you doing your job don't fit the stereotype of someone that does your job. So uh, another question, this is, this is getting into some good stuff here. What would you say are one or two important qualities that you need to be good at your job? What is something that is interesting about your job that most people might miss? So you do it every day. Um, people might have a certain perception of your job that it's dull or boring. And, but you notice that there's little things that not everyone knows that are interesting. Is there a perception that most people have about your job which is false or is it true in a totally funny way? Is there a way that someone you work with totally fits the stereotype of the job that you're in? How well do you fit in or how badly do you fit in with the crowd at work? When did you know that you were going into your profession? What did you want to be when you were little and what was the journey from wanting to do that to doing what you're doing now like? What job or jobs do you think would suit you better than what you're doing just now and why? Why aren't you doing, why are you doing what you're doing instead? What can you see yourself doing 10 years from now and how do you intend to get from what you're doing now to there? Does your job make you happy or fulfilled? Why or why not? If not, what would you rather do instead and why would it be fulfilling to you? If you have a plan to get there, you can add that too. Did something happen to inspire you to choose your profession or did you just kind of fall into it? How long do you want to or expect to stay in your current position? Um, and what would be the circumstances in which you change your position. Okay, so there's a big list of prompts there. And what you're going to do if you're listening to the podcast version or if you're listening on YouTube is wind it back and choose two of those that you like and write them down and then write down your answers to those two prompts. That's two questions I've given you. 
don't be tedious. No one wants to ask you what you do for you to say, I'm a systems analyst, and then stop. Don't be hard work. Don't make people work really hard to talk to you if you want them to like you. You step up. You take responsibility for your environment. You find something to be able to tell other people. Step up. Don't be a pussy. Step into the light. Use your power of vocal verbalization to give some fuel to make a conversation happen. If you don't want to talk about your job, I already did a video called how to change the subject. So you can use the techniques that I teach in that video to get you out of talking about it, but you're going to have to talk about it sooner or later. So you've got now two details based on two prompts about your job. And what you should do is you should turn those two details into a short and interesting paragraph about what you do. And then you should grab your phone and record yourself saying it. Read, read the paragraph into your phone and then yeah, do the hard work of listening to your own voice and correct the wording, make it sound more natural because it's very easy to write something down that sound, that looks nice written down but doesn't flow out of your mouth. And then you should, now you've got um, your job description and two details that you can say about your job anytime you're asked to talk about what you do. And you should practice, you, when you listen back, you, if you're going up at the end of sentences, like they're questions, even though they're not questions, then that's something that you can correct. If you speak in a dull and lifeless, monotonous tone, that's also something that you can correct. But where the rubber really hits the road is taking your little paragraph and taking it out and getting six to 12 opportunities to say it. If you're really clever, you can use several different combinations of the questions that I've proposed and you can try them out. You can try writing three different descriptions of your jobs based on the prompts that I've given you and the details and see which ones impact people better, see which ones create the kind of conversations that you want to talk about. Uh, another point is don't give people like sad sob stories or anything like that. Keep it sounding positive and natural. Um, if you are not happy with your job, you can talk about what you're learning from it or what you've benefited from it or your plan to get out of it. Like I sometimes talk about where I'm staying at the moment. I don't want to stay here forever, but it's a really um, good place for this period in my life because I can get my head down and do some writing here. When I want to be more social, I might want to move to a part of the town that's got more things going on. So that's the kind of thing. I'm not stuck in the, the negativity of living in a dreary part of town. Now, here's the awesome thing. If you're very brave, what you can do is you can send me your recording of you talking about your job description. Why? Because I'd like to do a whole podcast episode of where I take these and I give some feedback. It's not going to be um, torturous feedback or anything like that. It's just going to be some feedback to help people get the principle of how they can make talking about what they do more interesting. I'll give you feedback on your vocal tonality and say a few things that might help you improve the way that you talk about what you do in the future. And that would make really, really interesting listening for everyone, I'm sure. So I want to make that idea a reality to have a few people send in them talking about what it is they do for some free coaching. Sounds like a cool idea and it will help everyone else who can listen. So you can send that audio to anthony at beyourselfandloveit.com. One last point, whatever it is you do, own that shit, okay? I said like, you know, there's nothing wrong with um, having negative things to say as long as you make them a comedy of errors, you make it something funny. But take some cues for this from this hypothetical would-be Casanova. It's an example I use, a hypothetical example I use in my book, How to Make Small Talk. It's available in Kindle. I'm revising it for a paperback edition, beeping, beefing it out. And um, here is the script. The girl says, so what do you do, guy? I'm in IT, girl. Oh, that doesn't sound fun. Do you still live in your parents' basement, guy? Attic, actually, better Wi-Fi up there. 
actually you'd be surprised it's really interesting because you never know what problems will come up and you get to help people by simplifying things that they find complicated girl oh so you like working with those computers then guy yeah it's excellent let me show you something i'm working on on my phone he takes something out on his phone and he talks her through the project and explains what interests what's interesting in it by not accepting a judgment of himself as subordinate or his profession as inferior geeky whatever you want to call it he paints himself in a good light and leads the interaction into something positive okay until next time be yourself but don't just be yourself send me some audio of you talking about your job description so that i can turn it into a coaching podcast for you and everyone else to enjoy